What's going down? This is your man Don T of Don T Records Music Group. And I want to share with you some panning techniques. Have you ever wondered why your mix lack width? Or lack that big sound? Or just lacked excitement? Perhaps you got a mix and you just didn't know where to place your instruments within the stereo spectrum? That used to be me. But I'm here to help by sharing with you some panning techniques. So let's get into it. Let's go. Welcome back. So let's get right into it. So we use panning when mixing to create width, to create space, to create a more immersive experience uh, by generating a three-dimensional image that seems to surround the listener. Now, that's pretty much the textbook answer. Uh, but this just means, simply put, that we're creating movement, we're creating excitement, keeping the listener intrigued and interested in what we're doing, interested in our music. Also, it's important to understand that a uh, part of mixing is creating a focal point within your mix. Now, what, I, what do I mean a focal point? That's something that the listener can latch on to. You know, that might be an instrument or bass or, or of course, the lead vocal. It could be the kick drum, the snare, and, you know, all sorts of things. That we want the listener to latch on to. And we have to make these things dominant within our mix. And the simplest way to do that is to pan these instruments up the middle. That's right, center. Because this is naturally where the listener's ear is drawn. is right up the center. Alright, so the center is also beneficial uh, to low frequency information. Uh, one thing that rule of thumb for me is to uh, place instruments at 120 hertz and below in the center of the stereo spectrum. Generally, I would convert if it's a stereo uh, uh, wave or stereo file type, generally I would convert that to mono or send it to a mono track because normally, naturally, low frequency instruments or free, uh, instruments in the low frequency range generally are mono. All right. So another, another thing I would tell you is that if you got a piano a guitar, or whatever it is that's supporting the vocal, okay? You want to pan that instrument to the center. No, not to the center. My mistake. You want to pan it close to the center. Not at, in the center. Now, it can be put in the center, but that's, that's up to you. If it sounds good in the center, then place it in the center. But what I mean is, what I meant to say was place it closer closer to the center, not so far away so that it's way out here and it's supposed to support the vocal that's sitting in the middle. All right. Um, another tip before we, we jump into the doll is that if you got two instruments that share the same frequency range, you want to pan those instruments opposite of one another. For example, I got a a guitar, and I got a keyboard. So I may pan them one 40 to the left and the other 40 to the right. You do not want to pan them together because this could lead to masking. Um, it could lead to uh, uh, unbalanced mix. So basically, I'm hearing everything on the right or on the left that are key instruments within the in the mix and so it's kind of unbalanced and I'm like my head's like this because everything's on the left side 
or my head's like this because everything's on the right side. So just pan those instruments opposite of one another. And if you don't, it could lead to uh, ear fatigue because now everything's over here and my ear is just getting drowned out by all of that that's on the left side, all that energy on the left side. It also could lead to a lack of focus uh, for the listener because, you know, everything's like over here. Um, and also masking where uh, the two instruments are actually counseling out each other where you can, it cannot be heard clearly. Also, another tip for you before we get into the doll is to check your music in mono. You know, uh, make sure that it translates the same as it was in, as it did when it was in stereo. Uh, you should still be able to hear all your instruments clearly. Okay, and this is also a good way to pan is in mono, uh, so you can see how things open up as it is played in mono. Because in some clubs and some systems, they will play your music in mono. And so if you don't check your music in mono, and then it's played on a mono system, things may sound pretty bad. So you need to make sure that you're going back and forth from stereo to mono to ensure that your mix is translating back and forth from stereo to mono and, and, and vice versa. Also... Check your mix and headphones. Most of your listeners will listen to your mix and headphones and earbuds. And you want to make sure in your headphones that you got a good balance because sometimes you can pan things too far and it just doesn't sound natural. It will sound unnatural or sound lump sided, balanced, unbalanced or whatever the case may be. So here are, that's my final tip. So let's jump into the doll. All right. So. What we have here is I've set up two different drum kits. Now, they're not, now they're not full drum kits, uh, but the drum kits are set up uh, as if you were the drummer sitting behind, your, sitting behind the drum kit. They're not set up from an audience perspective. They're set up from a drummer's perspective. So as you look down here, I have uh, some instruments and I have some vocals. So we're going to go through this and, and we're going to talk about the panning. Uh, techniques used here uh, also understand that there's nothing to say oh you got to pan it there in that exact spot you have to really use your ears when you're mixing uh, to find the best uh, uh, position in the stereo spectrum spectrum for your instruments um, but what this does do is gives you uh, some techniques some uh, preset locations uh, these these different panning techniques in this uh, tutorial have been used and they do work. Okay, they they work for not only um, the uh, digital drums or electronic drums, but they also work for live drums. Now I don't have full kits here, uh, but they'll still work for live drums. So let's start with the kick drum to the far left. So the kick drum is uh, centered and I know some of you already know this but there are some out there that don't so just bear with me so the kick is centered the snare is also centered the hi-hat is panned to the left at 11 o'clock or 20 percent in Pro Tools and then I have an open hi-hat also panned at 20 percent uh, or 11 o'clock now, if uh, I just had a hi-hat, an open hi-hat in my mix, I may pan the open hi-hat off to the right uh, to about 25%. And the reason being is to create space and also add some movement and excitement to my mix. Now, in some cases, I also may not pan the hi-hat to the left. I may pan it all, uh, to the right instead. And that depends on also the track and what else is going on in the music and what sounds best. So we got the crash cymbal. And it's at 2 o'clock to the right. So let's pan to the right. We have the rod cymbal, which is between 0 and 11 o'clock. And that's pan to the left. And then we have uh, high tom, which is pan to the left at 11 o'clock. Then we all then we have uh, the mid tom, which is pan uh, to the right, 
at 1 o'clock. Then we have the low tom, also known as the floor tom. It's panned to the right between uh, 2 and 3 o'clock and 40% in Pro Tools. So if I say uh, 2 or 3 o'clock, you have to just uh, kind of pitch your clock and, and kind of put your pan. Uh, they call them pan knobs, but they also also known as pan pots or pot uh, to that perspective location. All right, so again, if electronic drums, you, you wouldn't have overheads, okay? So here I have overheads um, on the left and overhead on the right. So in this scenario, I have it panned out of the overhead on the left at 80%. And then I have the overhead on the right at 80%. Now some would just automatically pan this at 100%. Okay. Uh, you kind of just put the left on the left and put the right totally on the right. And there's nothing wrong with that either. However, some people like to bring, bring it in just a little closer. But again, it all goes by what you feel, how's it, how's it sound in the track, and what sounds best. So we have a tambourine, and it's panned off at uh, to the right between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Um, basically, this can go anywhere in the stereo spectrum, but I like to keep it opposite of the hi-hat, depending on what the tambourine is doing. And it also can be panned closer to uh, the center, but it also depends on um how how it sounds and 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 what its role is in the mix um then i have shaker the shaker is panned also uh, opposite of the uh tambourine um it's on the left side between uh 10 o'clock and nine o'clock um and the same thing with the shaker as it as it applies to the tambourine it can be panned on the left side wherever in the spectrum it sounds best so we got hand claps uh, you can place these right underneath the snare or place it off to the left or right just a little bit or you can replace of course their songs with just hand claps and just place it in the center um, and then here we have uh, stereo claps you can have a stereo channel or two separate channels to have another effect where the claps are uh, in the left and right ear and not up the center. This is an effect I've heard in uh, some mix mixes, not saying a whole lot, but it is an effect or uh, uh, that is used in mixing. And so here we got the drum kit uh, bus, which everything is uh, routed to, and it's panned hard left and right. Okay, so we got a smaller drum kit here. And really the only difference in this drum kit is where the high tom, mid tom, and low tom are placed in the uh, stereo spectrum. So the high tom in this case is placed at uh, 9 o'clock, and that's to the left, pan to the left. And then the mid tom is placed at 10 o'clock to the left, pan to the left. And then we have the low tom at 2 o'clock, uh, pan to the right. And this is just showing you that uh, there can be uh, different ways of panning the same exact instruments. And that also depends on how it sounds and also what's going on in the mix. Okay. And then we have another uh, drum kit bus where everything is routed to and it's panned hard left and right. So we're looking at some instruments now. So we got the bass. Uh, which is up the center because it is a, a low frequency instrument. And as I said earlier, it's, it's below 120 uh, hertz. And so a lot of times this is a mono uh, signal anyway. And besides, it's got a lot of energy with it and everybody wants to feel the bass up the middle. So pan that up the middle. And then we have synth pads. Now synth pads, these are uh, pan hard left and right and basically bringing some uh, fullness to the track um, 
and yeah, just just really just filling the track up and making it sound full and not empty. So that's a good place to pan it. So we got a rhythm guitar, which is pan three o'clock to the right, and then we have a guitar, which is panned at ten o'clock to the left, and then we have the keyboard or pianos or, or whatever that is pan uh, two o'clock to the right. Now these are pan opposite of each other. Uh, they're taking up the same exact uh, frequency range, and so we don't want to pan those at this on the same side. And besides that, as I said earlier, your mix may sound one-sided, where it's not balanced. So we got to try to uh, keep these separated. Now they do they can they be panned out further? Yes, you can pan them at 60. You can pan them at 100. It all depends on what sounds best. And then also keep in mind what is supporting the vocal. Are they supporting the vocal? Then you might want to keep them closer to the center so they can support the vocal. But these are some options in this setup of where you could pan things. Okay, so this is a duplicate of what you see here minus some changes of, of strings instead of pads. Uh, but for the most part, it's the same, it's the same setup. Uh, of course, my guitar is here. I can just just slide that over, and then you can see that it's it, it's identical. So it bases up the middle. Again, we got um, uh, the strings panned hard left and right, and as you can see, everything is panned hard left and right, and that's okay. I mean, uh, as you look at a stereo signal, you realize in a stereo signal, if you ever looked at one, is that the waves are different on the left and in the right and they're not the same and that's what makes it a stereo uh, file and so uh, the left and right may uh, the left versus the right may be louder okay or lower or or something else and because it's already been somewhat panned okay and so this is a, a method that they call LCR left center right okay and a lot of, I see some people use it sometimes uh, however, we can, we can, uh, do something different here if we want it to, and to make it identical to what's going on over here on this side. And so if you don't want your tracks, or if you have a stereo track that you want to then have it on one side, basically all you have to do is take your pods or knobs, pots, whatever you want to call these things, and pan them to the same location. So I pan that at, say, I don't know, at 30. Eh, let's go 33 like I did a while ago, say, so we can have to be identical. And then we have to take our keyboard also and pan it in the opposite direction. All right, so now we're starting to look like the um, example on the left, all right, where these placements are, all right. So these, these is, this is an option. If you got stereo uh, uh, tracks, you don't have to leave them pan hard left and right. You can be creative and create some movement in your mix, create some excitement in your mix, create some space in your mix. Um, so everything is open. You know, you just got to be creative about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. So this is the instrument bus, just like uh, the drum kit uh, bus, pan hard left and right. Everything's routed there. So let's look at vocals now. Let's take a look at these vocals. So basically this is uh, 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 hip hop rap vocals example. And it could be used for other things as well, but this is what I'm, I'm using this example for. So the leads up the middle. If you have a vocal dub, that's also up the middle, but it's tucked in underneath of the lead vocal. Okay. Um, another method, and this is more modern day. Let me just say where you tuck that under to give the lead vocal some some thick thickness, make it fatter, make it warmer. So that's a, that's a method to do that. Um, but also you can get creative if you wanted these to be on the same level as far as volume wise. You can pan them off like 
one to the left and one to the right at the same location. And I've done this before in mixes and it, it does some stuff. I mean, if that's the effects you're going for, for your, for your song, it may sound good. So you have to try it out and see uh, how it sound. So let me go ahead and put these back. Um, now the background vocal. All right, so the background vocal, depending on if I got, right now I got, right here I got two. So I'm going to pan them off uh, 40% uh, percent, uh, on the left and 40% on the right. Now if I had just one background vocal, I might pan it like 30 to the right. Um, and then to create movement, I may put an auto pan on it. Or when the phrases come up on the background... I would just do a, uh, automation and have this uh, pan back and forth from 30 to the right and then 30 to the left and so forth. So that's something to create some excitement and some movement in your music and your mixes. So that's a good uh, idea to do. Um, as moving along, we got back at 40%. Now, these don't have to stay at 40%. You can move them. Um, to 100% if you if you choose to move them at 100%. But again, it goes back to what sounds best for your mix. So just keep that in mind. If it sounds good, uh, then do that. But also, as you're doing this, you're, you're checking stuff in mono. You're checking it back and forth, making sure that your mix stays balanced, you know, as, you, as you're moving your pan pods around, pots or knobs around, uh, whichever you prefer to call them. So here I got an ad lib vocal. Now I got it left to the, uh, at 30, but again, I'm gonna create some movement. Either I'm gonna do some automation or I'm gonna uh, simply uh, add a auto pan plugin on it to have it pan back and forth uh, to create some movement in the mix. Now, if I had two of these uh, ad libs, I may pan them a little further out, like at 60. Um, on both sides, right and left. Again, like I said, there's no hard rules, but it's just it's about being creative and also just just um, creating this experience for the listeners, okay? So that you can try that out. And then I have a hook here. So basically I got the lead, background. I got two backgrounds, okay? So basically with this, these backgrounds are going to thicken up this this lead so that it sounds a little fuller. Now you can add more if you like, depending on how big you want it. Um, that's up to you. Uh, but the lead stays up the middle. Trying to pan the backgrounds off 30. And I might even go, go, go out to 60, depending on how much separation uh, I want uh, from those vocals, okay? Uh, so you just have to play around with it and see what sounds best. And you can even go further if you like. But um, it would sound pretty thin in my opinion if I went 100% because now I got one up the middle and then just one on each side it may sound good for some things but depending on what you're doing so just keep that in mind all right so we got a vocal bus that's all these uh vocals are routed to and it's paying hard left and right um here is more R&B pop uh type of deal um of course the lead vocal is up the middle uh, we got background harmony here. So I got four tracks of background harmony for the lead vocal. And they're panned off left, 100% uh, left, 100% right, 100% left, and 100% right. Um, one thing I would tell you is, is you see over here, if you look down here further, I got the chorus. Or I might call it the hook. I like to say hook. I mean, chorus, you know, the hook, chorus, hook. I don't know which one you prefer. But... I have more tracks here than I have here. And the reason is I don't want my verses to sound bigger than my my hook or my chorus, okay? Or my hook. I'm going to say hook. I'm going to keep hook. I don't want it to sound bigger than my hook, okay? So, but I blend these in with the, the vocals. And again, you can have more than four. Have how many ever you want. Um, I then bust them to a, uh, to a bus. And I can I pan it out 60, but you can also pan it out to 100. It depends on what you're going for, okay? Just figure, uh, you just have to listen to it and see what sounds best. 
and it, it may not sound too bad, but again, you have to use your ears to determine what's going to sound better for your mix and, 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 you know, keep a balance as well. So here we go. So we got over here lastly, and then I'm going to show you a mix that I've done, but I'm not going to be able to play it for you because the song has not been released officially yet. But I'll show you some of the moves I've did in that mix. And then perhaps later we'll come back to it. And then I can show you what I did in that mix step by step. Okay, so here we got the course. Again, everything's hard left, hard right, hard left, hard right. And all these tracks are then balanced together and mixed together to make a cohesive sound. Okay. Um, and then over here, that pan hard left and right. Because everything is being channeled through this bus and process. And if you had a lead vocal here, which I don't, which basically is normally uh, the lead vocal itself being sung uh, here, that's going to be up the middle. If I had ad libs, then of course I'm going to put them in this perspective location within the stereo spectrum. Okay. And that could be at 30 going back and forth, depending on what that's doing. Uh, to create movement and excitement in my mix. Okay, let me move on over. This might take a second to load, but let me take you to a mix real quick. I will save that um, to a mix real quick. Okay, so here's a mix that I recently finished uh, on a song. And again, if you look here where my kick is placed up the center, uh, then I have an 808 bass up the center, snare up the center, Hi-hats, I got uh, stereo because this hi-hat was a stereo hi-hat and I didn't want to lose the the meat of the sound or whatever, you know, because I liked it as it was. So I kept it and I just panned it both uh, knobs off to the uh, about 10 o'clock, well not 10 o'clock, about 11 o'clock, between 0 and 11 o'clock uh, to the left. And then here's a cymbal. So it's off a little bit further to the right at about, about 1 o'clock. Um, and then I had uh, Moog bass. Um, it's panned to the center. Of course, it's a low instrument. Had a pitch riser. Here's some of the instruments. Pan hard left and right. Um, this stereo track um, is basically like a transition sound. And so it's pan hard left and right because it's doing something in there uh, as far as the uh, sample goes. And then here I got a uh, scratchy, which is also pan hard and left and right. And then I have, I don't know what this is, but these two instruments I know uh, are doing something similar and, and they're taking up the same uh, frequency range. And so if you look here, I didn't, they're stereo files, but I didn't want them to be hard left and right. And I didn't want them to be on the same side. And so I pan both knobs on this one hard left. And then I pan this instrument here or this sound effect hard right and then we have pianos which uh, are supporting the vocal which I kept close to the center uh, panning this this piano at uh, 45 and then I had another piano I panned at 30 uh, because this piano basically is supporting this piano as well uh, so I, but I did want them separate because they do take up the same frequency range and so I panned it off uh, to the right at, at 30%. And then all the rest of these sounds are hard left and right because, you know, they were like atmosphere. It's like an effect to give it some fullness, uh, give it some warmth, and then some effects, and then some synth sounds, which I could have panned and lead up the center, but I didn't want uh, to, uh, to clog the center with these sounds. And plus, they sounded better being a little bit farther spread out so I can hear it on the left side and right side and hear exactly what what's going on with it and, and the different effects that would asso were associated with uh, these stereo files. Um, this si sound here got taken out because it, it just took away from the mix so I decided to just get rid of it totally. Um, right here we got the lead, uh, the hook, hook leads up the middle we got an ad lib, which is just slightly off to the right. Just slightly, just to make room because it's being 
it's going on at the same time um, the hook lead is. And so it's it's doing something. And I didn't want it to be off too far because I want it to be right tucked under doing whatever it's doing. And then we had uh, backgrounds, of course. Uh, actually, they're not exactly backgrounds. I guess we consider them to be ad-libs because... They're not saying the uh, exact same thing at the same time as this lead is. So I just wanted them uh, a little bit off to the a little bit off to the center. And then we got uh, the lead, which is up the middle. And again, it's kind of uh, these are ad libs and backgrounds, and 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 I think I have some automation on these. So they're they're doing something. They're doing they're doing movement uh, within the song within the mix so all these are, are exactly the same doing some something similar so you know that's that's what's going on here in this track uh hopefully uh in the future i'll be able to break this track down for you and talk about it a little bit and you'll be able to hear uh what great quality and what a great song this is all right so that there, there you have it i hope that uh you're able to use some of these uh techniques for yourself as a starting point to get you started and get you off to a good uh, mixing session uh, to get some great sound and music with some some movement and excitement and uh, some space uh, some width and all that so thank you for tuning in I want you to please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll bring you some more uh, videos in the future it's been a busy year been in here working on mixes. If you would leave your panning techniques down the bottom to help everybody out in the community, we would love it. Love to have them and see what you're doing in your mixes. All right, this is Don T, Don T Records Music Group, and I'm out. Peace.